idea of how it was still in those fentanyl patches when I used them. And so I had quite a few of them on at a time. As soon as I sort of felt like the high was going, I'd put another one on. And one morning, I just didn't wake up. You were taken to your hospital. I was taken to my hospital emergency department, yes. And so what's that like to go in? So I woke up in the emergency department, um, obviously terribly embarrassed, terribly ashamed of, um, of where I was. Tempted by easy access. And in just in a matter of literally seconds, and they're out the door. And the desperate measures taken to get a fix. You were doing your job impaired. When W5 continues. When hospital staff with addiction steal drugs from work, it has a name, drug diversion. And it can have catastrophic outcomes for both the addicts and patients. According to Statistics Canada, the addiction rate in the general population is 20%, and that 20% includes the staff at hospitals and pharmacies. There's no bias when you're looking at uh, the addiction and substance use. Nurse anesthetist Rico Garcia knows all too well the danger of unlimited access to narcotics. He's spoken to the U.S. Congress about diversion and runs a rehab center for healthcare workers in Indiana. If you come to the hospital, you're typically going to run into 20 or 30 different people, different specialties from nursing to medicine to pharmacy. Out of those 20 or 30 people, two or three of them are going to be uh, diagnosable as a substance use disorder. So this here is the pre-op holding area. This is the first encounter that I usually have with uh, the patients and the families. Rigo took W5 inside an operating room to show us just how easy it can be for addicted staff to take drugs meant for patients. So you can really find a diversion potential and diversion opportunity in most ORs, most ERs, most hospitals. So this 